Welcome back to another episode of In the Studio at Davis Media Access. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Lynn Weaver and our topic today is teen depression and addiction. And my guest is Dr. Aging Singh, a psychiatrist specializing in child uh, psychology and addiction. Welcome, Dr. Singh. Very happy that you're here. So let me introduce you. Dr. Sin has been practicing medicine uh, for about 20 years. That's right. And he's an American board certified physician in general psychiatry, child and adolescent psychiatry, and addiction medicine. He's also a member of the Yolo County Local Mental Health Board and the chair of the board's education and planning committee. Yes. He and his wife, have a daughter who is 16 and a sophomore at Javis Ahai and a son who is one year old. Dr. Singh treats psychiatry patients of all ages, but his special interest is in young people's substance use problems. Again, thank you very much. Thank you for having me. This is a, a sobering topic, uh, as you know, and it's reaching epidemics and uh, in terms of uh, teen uh, substance abuse. So it is good that we're talking about it. In addition, May is the uh, Mental Health Month, uh, which um, provides us more, even more awareness uh, and focus to this uh, problem. So Dr. Singh, could you tell us what are typically uh, the changes that an adolescent, a child rather, uh, is experiencing uh, when uh, he or she uh, go into adolescence? Adolescence is, is a stressful period of a child's life. Uh, you know, they're going through separation and individuation. They're trying to uh, establish their own identity they're separating from the family, uh, developing peer relations. Uh, this is a very uh, anxiety prone period for them as well. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of confusion. Uh, sometimes they do things which they think are, are you know, good under peer pressure, but doesn't turn out to be great. A uh, mm -hmm. lot of time they have difficulty uh, understanding or differentiating right from wrong. So that's the time when we as parents need to provide full support uh, with, with the feeling, with giving them a feeling that they have their own individual space, but also that parents are available mm -hmm. for to, to figure out if they have any confusions, any stress, or any other problems going on where they need support. From, uh, as a physician, from a physician's point of view, what are the physical again, the most common physical and uh, psychological changes that you see um, in, in, uh, in this change between a child and adolescence. Obviously, there is the change of the physical aspect. Uh, it's a growing time and uh, uh, for, both men, uh, for both children and, you know, uh, boys and, and girls. girls yes. yes. What other things happen in the brain, do you think? In addition to the physical changes which we all see, uh, uh, they have they develop their own identity, so they want their own space, own time, and then the, another big uh, aspect of this uh, phase is experimentation. So they try new things to learn uh, how, and that always doesn't work out well. And experimentation with drugs is, is rising pretty top on the list over yes, the last two yes, decades. Yes, and we're going to talk about that, yeah. of course. And uh, other than that, uh, sometimes they develop their own, uh, uh, you know, the teenage years, sometimes it's perceived as irritability. Uh, then they have uh, the sense of competition with the peers that develops, and that brings in stress. And uh, these cause, they, they cause a lot of changes in the, thought and also lays down the foundation for future thinking, planning and the future. Mm -hmm. And personality. Personality development as well, yes. Uh, how, uh, how do you spot 
uh, depression in, uh, in adolescence. Versus the normal behavior, right? Versus a normal behavior because sometimes uh, moods and moodiness uh, uh, is overshadowed or vice versa with depression. So how do you extrapolate what is just normal moodiness for a teenager and the serious signs of something more, more, um, more pathological. So with the normal moodiness of teenage, usually uh, our adolescents and children, they, they return to the baseline sooner or later. It's more like a transient change. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the typical symptoms of clinical depression that we should uh, monitor is ongoing irritability, decline in school performance or decline in sports, uh, they, they're not comfortable with social situations, uh, anxious in peer, uh, peer relationships, peer pressure, their sleep is affected, their appetite is affected, they may start to sleep more to escape or they may not sleep at all. Mm -hmm. Appetite changes, a uh, lot of guilt associated with this, a lot of uh, confusion. Uh, school performance, as I said, concentration and attention is usually the reason why they uh, experience those uh, uh, symptoms, uh, hopelessness, symptoms. helplessness. Yeah. Sometimes they start to self, start self-harm behaviors, mm -hmm. suicidal thoughts. Mm -hmm. And there are times I've heard from parents that you know, everybody goes through a time when they had the suicidal thoughts. Mm -hmm. Even a transient suicidal thought is not normal until it's, it, war it actually warrants an evaluation. Yes, so. and uh, so, so these are uh, the symptoms that a parent should be uh, watching for. Now, there's a, there's a question here. Suppose you're a parent and you notice, well, you are a parent, yes. but suppose a parent notices some of these traits uh, exhibited by their, uh, their child. Do they and want to take the child to a psychiatrist uh, or a psychologist or even the primary care physician? Do, they, do the parents have the authority to take the permission of, uh, to take them there? Or do they need their son or daughter's permission to go and visit a doctor? Um, in California, it's 12 years and older, uh, kids can consent for their treatment. So it reflects the other way around. Yes, we should ask them. But before we get to that point, uh, yes. we need the child to understand or we need to make them feel that they are being supported yes. and that the family is there. Uh, the child may agree in pressure from the parents to go for an evaluation or see a doctor, but unless they open up, unless they feel themselves, they feel the need mm -hmm. for this, it's, it's not going to be very fruitful. So even yes. we, before we go to a doctor or a uh, psychologist or a psychiatrist, yes. uh, we should have a conversation and parents should gently explore, uh, not too much uh, you know, uh, into their private life, but they should mm -hmm. gently explore what's going on mm -hmm. and that uh, the child should feel supported and should be able to come up with a plan with their parents that should be agreeable. That has the best outcome. Uh, I, uh, I see that and uh, also I think one thing parents can do is certainly not frighten the child yes. because this is a very uh, uh, frightening stage of their lives, isn't yeah. that right? Yeah. Do you see a difference between boys and girls in terms of uh, the um, frequency of this serious depression or I don't know probably there are there is research but maybe. yes there is research. yes before puberty the rate is almost similar in boys oh, and girls okay most but after uh, 50, yes. yeah 50 uh, mm -hmm. and after uh, 50 50 but after they hit the puberty the girls have uh, twice as more at risk than the boys to develop these symptoms that is yeah. interesting yeah. and it seems to linger into adulthood, I believe, because women are more prone to depression, or at least that's what is believed. Yes. But let's talk about addiction, because everybody's talking about addiction, and uh, especially this opioid addiction. So what I'd like you to do is give, give us, Dr. Singh, give us an overview of uh, what this ad teen addiction is like in our community. Is it a lot? Not enough? <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's growing for sure. Yes. So traditionally, uh, alcohol 
cannabis and nicotine cigarettes are the were, first step four steps they used to be yes they are still but now the new uh, addiction opioid addiction is slowly creeping up yes uh, we don't have exact numbers in Yolo County. They're still uh, uh, calculating the board, the Yolo County Mental Health Services, but the numbers are increasing, mm -hmm. uh, and that also corresponds with the with the opioid epidemic our nation is currently going through. Uh, epidemic. It's yes. An, it's almost an epidemic. It's op uh, and they almost declared a national health emergency on yes. opioids. Yes. And. Uh, 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 during one of our conversation, you mentioned that uh, uh, these drugs, the opioids, are very easily to to get. Isn't that perhaps one of the reasons why everybody is abusing them? Yeah, eighty percent of opioid addiction starts from prescribed prescription medications. Really? Yeah, and when it comes to teen, they think that it was a prescription medication. Their family members, their grandparents were prescribed, so it's safe to take it. Yes. So that is a notion, sometimes misconception they have, and that leads them to uh, yes. prescription uh, starts with you know trying uh, experimentation. And one aspect of if there is an ongoing depression, these many people will feel euphoric effect. It's like an oh. instant antidepressant effect, but that doesn't stay long and it has its own and that serious And that manifests problems. itself uh, into being addicted, yes. of course, because they want to feel good. Yes. Now, I, uh, I'd like to mention, you've been doing extensive research and even into um, a, um, a way to limit the taking of opioid. Uh, you've uh, uh, you're patenting uh, a bottle that uh, yeah, it's a, it, it'll be in the form of a box. It's a tamper-proof uh, opioid, opioid, opioid pill box. dispenser, uh, abuse <laughs> resistant. Uh, uh, yes. It'll have a camera and only the authorized person can take it. And if somebody tra tries to break through it, it'll destroy all the remaining uh, opioids in it. And there is no... <laughs> way that a person can take out the medication and give it to someone else or store it or uh, sell it. Dr. Singh, we've talked about the, um, the drugs and the opioids and the um, bad remedies that teenagers uh, uh, go to uh, for, to overcome their challenges. Uh, let's talk, perhaps you in your practice, uh, um, prescribe some uh, good medicine that can help the brain uh, uh, with depression and uh, other abnormal behavior that these children have. Would you like to expand on that? Yeah, the <clears throat> most common uh, disorders being anxiety and depression, we try to first uh, uh, treat them with psychotherapy. Different types of psychotherapies are available, supportive cognitive behavioral therapy, dialectical behavioral therapy. And for moderate to severe depression, we resort to medications. Um, the first line um, drugs used for treat depression and anxiety are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors. We call them SSRIs. The, the most, SSRIs, yeah, yes. The most common ones being Prozac, Celexa, Zoloft. Uh, these are the common names. There are six members in this family. And they tend to have good results if, if uh, given the right patient under correct monitoring. Mm -hmm. yeah. Are there any side effects to these uh, uh, serotonin-based uh, medicines? Yeah, as a matter of fact, all medications have side effects, so these do too. And yeah. one most important side effect, which we always uh, recommend the patients and the parents to monitor is for any new onset suicidal thoughts or worsening of suicidal behaviors or thoughts, uh, they need warrant immediate uh, Attention. attention and uh, mm. and is these suicidal talks are uh, more prominent in teenagers adolescents yes uh, to 25 years and under is where the warning is for these uh, age groups yes for adolescents yes. It's, it's it's more common yeah i'm afraid our time is basically up it went so fast yes, what i wanted to add is that uh, the there is a website that will be displayed where you can find Dr. Singh and if you have questions or if you want to simply know a little more about uh, Dr. Singh, you can just go there. Um, 
thank you so much for joining us. I know how busy you are, so I'm really grateful that you help us today to understand a little more what uh, uh, this topic, uh, this very important topic is all about. And I wish you the very best of luck in your practice and for your family. Thank you. And uh, to all of you who have been watching, Thank you so much and see you next time. Thanks.